six years ago, I I wasn't in a friend circle that was big enough to see the tremors of what has happened in in Galway or Cork. And everybody so, said Irish hip hop was crap. They would tell me there's no such thing as Irish hip hop. <laughs> and then and then through me and people like Andy and and John, they were like, Nah, do you know what, G? Here's scary area. Here's all these people. Look, they look what they did. This guy actually, you know, beat the guy from House of Pain in a battle, and they're not good. And look at this. We didn't know all that was happening because there was no one in the people I was around that could tell me the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. E, this is Kevin Noon, this is Shaul, half she and half cool. I skipped the swords for body, give me the board and I'm fully up on McGilly Cuddy Gully, you're both the clouds and the pressure's down, seize that. I know heads like, you know, they'd be into, mad into hip hop from Sligo, they'd be brought up on the Wu Tang and like all the fucking heavy, heavy stuff, and they just look at us and, and you know, they'd be thinking, that's, that's not hip hop, that's not rap, they, they, they can't like see it you know, cross over to someone in Ireland or Europe or whatever. They just, they just think it's like American and that's the way it should be. Mm. Which is sad in a way because I always say to people, you know, you, you get people that knock Irish hip hop, but half of them have never been to a gig. And if you go to a gig and you see the two boys rap or any any other rappers from, from Ireland, you see it live and, and see the skill that's involved. I, I, I think you, you'd have a different view. So I'm gonna press play, we're gonna go, yeah? Scratching the surface, seek meaning and purpose, subterranean, oh there she goes again, creating rhythmic patterns with pen, dot hits, crotch hits, expel demons from whence they dwell, cavernous porous swells, tidally immense, make every effort, wash away and recompense, ill behaviour or cause and effect, They're hidden. the guilt looms tall as I shame yeah, the poetry, it's a thinking pastime, rap. I'm still deciphering or being able to extract, um, meaning or interpretation from some of my favorite artists now 20 years later 25 years later so i'm thinking like whoa you know and uh, they may have never even meant that <laughs> I first kind of got into rap with my ma. She had like two pack tapes and Arrest Development and De La Soul tapes in this old estate car that me and my sister used to be hopping over the back when we go down to Omni for the shopping. I didn't tell anybody I rapped for like about four years. Just kept it to myself, my own little craft, learning how to do it. And then eventually someone was like, I remember, I think it was somebody at school was like rapping. And they were like, brutal. I was like, Psst. That's shite, and they were like, yeah, you do better then. And I was like, grand, then I played Will. And I started rapping, and everyone was like, do you fella with the glasses, Mango, he can rap. I say no to your mix like Cocainos, but I spit fire like Volcanoes. Top boy radio, Mocanoes, so can I get a reload like Kano? I, I don't know why exactly, but there's definitely much more interest from a younger crowd. I think it's just because, well, part of it will be, I think, uh, a reaction to the fact that house and techno are so big in Dublin at the moment. Like Dublin's kind of almost a techno hotspot these days with District 8. So there's obviously a lot of younger like clubbers who they like going out and they like going to gigs and they're really into music but they're not necessarily into house and techno. So I think this whole kind of scene has emerged as a reaction to that. The standards have definitely changed. In the last maybe four years has jumped significantly to what it was for maybe six or seven or eight years before that kind of plateaued and that was it and i think technology and the price of software or the diy availability to artists these days has played a massive part in this being kind of accelerated over the last number of years it was pretty vibrant for a while but then it just in the mid 2000s it just kind of dropped the, the whole scene did i think it was some i think there was just there was a lot of shit hip-hop coming out in general and it was kind of that period where it probably happens in a lot of different genres where like everyone's kind of subconsciously waiting for something new to happen. I think one really important thing to happen in Irish 
rapper in Irish hip hop was the arrival of the Rubber Bandits because they actually changed everything and flipped it. That kind of held a mirror to a lot of people who were rapping in Ireland, but maybe they weren't doing it in the most mature or kind of sophisticated way. And when they held up that mirror to kind of show people this is what it's like, I think everyone actually stood back and was like, you know what, we can present ourselves way better than this. I started off on the Irish hip hop scene fucking 12 years ago and it was terrible, it was awful. It was lads, they didn't know what to talk about. They were, if they weren't trying to sound American, they were talking about being on the dole and burning holes in their tracksuit pants with giants. I was going, fuck it, I love rap, right? I love rap with all my soul, but I've nothing to rap about. So I took my influence from like, the likes of James Joyson and fucking Flann O'Brien and was like, how can I bring that Irish surrealism and humor and place that within rap? And then that's what we kind of did. And the first kind of main rap song we did was one called Pure Awkward. It was about shifting Ice Cube. It's a Monday, I got up pure early. I shot Ice Cube, the proper way to swing a hurley. Man, Ice Cube, you're so big and burly. Your skin is so brown and your hair's lovely and curly. So that's what it was then, and th then now, the lyrics have improved, the beats have improved, and that's where we come to my man Kojak, who was part of the new school of Irish rap, and he's absolutely fucking unreal. All I feel is the beat and the pen grip, a big like a squid, a spilling to the end. I still link with one man with a circle smaller, like five six balance. I'm a dick, I'm taller. Wish this burner had an ID collar. Bitch keeps asking about Tame Impala. I could show you loner, but my inner speaker don't let shit in. That's why you may have liked her, but I never called her. Yeah, I don't know. Irish hip hop is a, it's a very funny paradigm because there's the whole Irishness of, of very much not being proud, not being braggadocious. That's a problem. Not not talking about you. so so you get this thing of the apologetic rapper. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like this fella that's meant to stand up and, and kind of get the crowd going and that sort of thing. He's like, "How's it going? I'm just here to do a couple couple songs. I hope you don't mind." And it's like, "Yeah, I'm the best." Rapping about greyhounds because it's like I can't be braggadocious, but I can can write a song about my greyhound having a tail like a cock. I think just even the urban music scene in general, like back in the day it was, to be frank, it was just really white. It was just all like lads in tracksuits talking about that fucking area and this and that and tour. And you know, you're writing reality to a bit, but it seemed like every other tune was about somebody ending up on heroin or somebody ended up killing themselves. And it was like, Jesus, lads. Now it's great because you have this like, first generation of immigrant kids from like Eastern Europe and you know Africa and they're all coming in and they're infusing with Ireland so it's great to be able to have a more kind of multicultural of people who aren't just all telling the same story. What you say, what you say, what you say, what you say, sound check, sound check, sound check, sound check. I go by the name Profound, I'm a rapper, singer, Musician. Originally, I'm from Zimbabwe, but I live in Tala, in Dublin. Feeling like I'm on the top floor out here. I might jump, but my body might just mash against the pavement, or the wind might drag me to a nearer state. The whole urban scene in Ireland is growing completely. Like there's artists, there's people designing clothes, crazy things happening. There's still a lingering perception that it's. It's not growing and it'll never get anywhere, but I feel like the scene is coming. The scene is growing. The one advantage that the, especially the African immigrant population does have in terms of uh, Irish rappers, they sound more natural. If you look at Russell Gana family, is a good example, as well as not just being you know, uh, your standard braggadocia from, from rappers, you're getting actually really good insights into what their lives are like and what it's like to <clears throat> be from Africa and grow up somewhere else and then figure out, oh, I'm Irish as well, which is, that's what one of their songs is about, Lights Out. I landed in Ireland in 2001, but the same time that Dre dropped 2001, 13 years later, the album's done. With Zangano presents non national with the attitude, volume one. So uh, I got into hip hop by a freestyle session in the canteen of my secondary school because when I was 12, somehow people thought I looked like 50 Cent. There was another kid in the school uh, who rapped at the time, so they thought. I should battle him. Fight uh, him, you know. yeah. So I battled him. Uh, he slayed me. So then it was. Uh, I went on a journey of discovery. Since. It was just a kind of a tipping point thing. Oh, I just 
hate the Irish accent in rap or whatever. And like, I don't think I've heard that in a couple of years, which is which is great, you know. Um, it's been normalised now by say little dialects, by the working class guys. It's by loads of people all over Ireland, really. Like, as in, like most people now probably know a rapper, which was like not the case <laughs> ten years ago, you know. Um, even just like say when we get a new kid coming in here, they're usually at a certain level, whereas maybe maybe. Five years ago, they were coming in with nothing. Look, if you want, there is an outlet here for you to express yourself, but you can actually take it to another level too. What do you actually want to do in life? You know, Maybe this is what it is. If this is what it is, then here are the different nuggets that may help you take it to that level. Really, for me, like, the honest truth, like, I just don't really have anything else to do, but as on top of that as well, I really like it. And I don't really see myself doing anything else other than rap, but once I actually enjoy something and I have the space to do it in, I'm going to keep doing it, like. I'm Jer Keller, this is Linko. We're a Dublin hip-hop group called Fifth Element from Ballymun. Spent my youth with you. Oh, and the Rugrats move. You think you rap hard? Well, you ain't no rap tar. Best be smart like Dexter. Aim for your best parts. Gun star, hero, neutron, gonna get far. Don't wanna be a fool. When we started, you were hiding that you were, you were a rapper. Now I'm getting messages every week saying I'm a rapper. I only started two weeks ago. It's legitimized now nearly, you know what I mean? Like, you can actually get onto a professional kind of platform. It's just we just need more fan base behind it now to push it. I love it. Uh, I've always loved hip-hop and at first, you know, when I heard Irish, there's always the accent that well, puts a lot of people off. But I think it's just a thing where people need to just get used to it first. It just becomes a norm, just like UK hip-hop. Yeah, but the Irish accent, the guys that rap with the Irish accent, I think they actually sound pretty good. Yeah, I like the accent. I mean, it distinguishes you. You know, literally, this is, you know, where I am. I'm from Dublin. I was raised here. This is what I'm rapping about, as opposed to, you know, an Irish guy from Dublin rapping about Steph struggles in L.A. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> people not using their own accent wrecks my head. Imagine I came out like with a London accent trying to do grime. It looked like a tick. We speak in a fucking mental way. Like, we speak English arse ways, backwards, because it's like the Irish format and English speaking. So this is a great way that we can flip the script on it. The same way the London Caribbean guys like flipped it to their own kind of weird language. And people really responded because they go, he's being himself, like that's really who that guy is. By God, is it backwards we're going? Till they sit scribbling in the epiphany's flow. Open, open, pop, guy comes a life into sight and a view. Social media shit, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't sleep. No. Someone has to think about it. I thought this gig is unreal, like, you know. Didn't think it was going to be as big as this. This room looks good. This is, this is more us. This is us. And the ice cold. I hit the slap. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think people just, because the fact that we get up and do it and do our own thing in our own style, people have respect for us, then we're not gangsters or any crack like that. I think that's that's the biggest part of hip-hop, like, because it's, uh, it's nearly just a way of expressing who we are, you know, that kind of way. It's like, yeah, I'm from Sligo. I don't have to be from the Bronx to be a rapper. It's like, I'm from Sligo, but I can still rap. It's just a style. <laughs> To be honest, at that age, I thought English was like the way you had to be. Like, and uh, the Irish was just, I think I started writing stuff in Irish out of frustration because I just it wasn't completely comfortable with myself in English. I'm biased, so I guess, just because it's my first language, but I actually think it's quite easy to rhyme in Irish. Uh, the one thing I do try and do is just to take away some of the really guttural edges and like just try and like round it a little bit because if you're focusing if you're focusing too much on the sounds then like it's it's a bit of a turn off. We've heard every story from America like that we can hear. You know, rich kid, poor kid, South kid. I don't know what it's like, you know, from another county in Ireland. I don't know to do you get me? I don't yeah. know all the counties that have different accents and flows, we've killed all the stereotypes. So because now the stereotypes are gone, like you can actually hear the stories because you're not judging. Before two people were just judgmental before they even hear someone spit. 
they were like, oh, Irish people. You know, it's like that stereotype is gone. It's out the water. When you hear it, you're like, I can't wait to hear what he's going to say. The winner of the RTE Choice Music Prize Award for Best Album of the Year, Ross and Gano Family. <laughs> My life has been completely enriched by the two boys here. It has been absolutely a, like the greatest. Uh, I've learned so much. I've never felt such love off two people before. And I'm absolutely honored to be in Ross and Gano. So I want to thank the two lads here. Thank you. I saw a quote in an interview recently where it was a young rapper, I think he's 19, and he was just said like, Ross and Gano just won the Choice Music Awards. This is huge. This opens the door for anyone that's kind of coming up in the scene where it's like, why can't I do it? You listen to old school trad tunes, especially shit by the Dubliners, uh, you know, Rocky Road to Dublin, um, even the Wolf Tones. There's, there's a, there's a hip hop nature to it. Even like the, the Clancy Brothers, the song Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew by the Clancy Brothers, you know, you, it sounds diddly eye. What it's, what it's about is, is fucking brewing Pochine up a mountain, baiting the heads off guards. The fucking come out your black and tans, come out and fight me like a man. That's NWA. It's, that's fuck the police. It is fuck the police. In a lot of ways, I think uh, rap in Ireland makes, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, because like, you know, Irish <coughs> people are known for being writers, poets, musicians. Yeah. You know, I'd be really shocked if it never came to life in Ireland. Can you imagine if someone turned around to Joyce or to Beckett? I was like, oh, you shouldn't write about Ireland. Like, you've no business writing about Ireland or writing about Irish life. Like, that's insane. And the whole world would have lost out because of that. We're all in it for the good of hip hop. We're all coming together and fucking creating a movement. All of us are about two phone calls from one another. Like, this is a very, very vibrant, wholesome scene. It's a community. I also think that we're probably the greatest fans on the planet in terms of if you get Irish people behind you, you know. I mean, what, what, what's better than that? I'm really excited to see where this goes over, over the next couple of years. Um, we definitely will have our own space, genre-wise, eventually, because I don't like the term Irish hip-hop, because it's just like, I kind of, it's hip-hop. Hip-hop is about where you're from. I don't listen to Stormzy to be like, I love you, baby, baby, shit, or talking about LA. He tells me what it's like where he's from in South London, or Kendrick Lamar tells me about Compton. And they do it unapologetically. If you don't love where you're from, where you're from won't love you. Do you know? And that's the essence of hip hop. Tattoos out because it's roasting. Tracks to crowd with toasting. Pirate fans just fade for the summer. God bless, we make it to another bar. But for now, let me look slick. Fresh fade in the fluxes, let me pop this cell cup strapped up with a diva. Texting Katie, texting Kiva. Two burns, one phone crew, but need her. My ex too stressed, so I had to leave her. No stressing, 